An excerpt from Isi Twaland, where performed by Isoli Chadad Choir, conducted by Udu Misani Tembani. Kalondlela, we salute Unga Sekoyo Bawo Oar Tambo, eh, who was born Lenyanga ka October on the 27th. We know, um, I think up until 2017, in Melting Pot um, Choir competitions or festival used to be one festival um, in addition to the Eastern Cape Choral Music Association, the ECMA in the Eastern Cape, that used to have a festival in honor of O.R. Tambo. That song was written um, in 2014 as part of the songs that were um, written for the Melting Pot. Good afternoon and welcome to the Choralist Conversations with me, Sibusi Sonjeza, and thank you for being here. It's a beautiful day in the mother city. Um, we've just crowned a new Miss South Africa who hails from the province Yelimpopo and congratulations to Shudufato Musida. Um, I'm only bringing up this issue Miss South Africa particularly because of her response that she gave to a question Miss Universe Uzo's Bini Tunzi. Just in case you missed it, let me play it for you. Hi Shudu, how are you feeling? I feel excited. <laughs> well, congratulations on making it this far. You've been doing an incredible job. My question for you is, in the past year, we've witnessed a global wave of mass demonstrations against gender-based violence and the Black Lives Matter movement. If you could mobilize a group of people, what movement would you mobilize and why? I would call my movement the Mindful Movement. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death between pe people aged 15 and 29. Um, one in three people are expected to suffer from mental illnesses in their lifetime. So I believe that mobilizing people to strive for mental health would actually fix so many social ills in our society. And that is what I would mobilize. Thank you. Thank you, Shudipato. Yes, destigmatizing mental health would actually heal a lot of social ills. Um, we've, we've had friends, we've had family members, we've seen neighbors, we've seen people from our communities who are suffering from mental health being called Amageza, we are Kayeka, we are Shanya, all these nasty names, because we refuse as communities to accept and embrace and help people with mental health um, challenges. So the month of October, some of us know that it has been set aside as a mental health awareness month. And I thought after Umis South Africa brought to this and, and responded beautifully so, I needed to bring this up so that as a community, maybe as a community of choralists, 
or as a community from wherever we come from, we begin to look at the issue of mental health with a different attitude and know that people who suffer from mental health, Ngabantu, and it's normal, it happens, and it can be cured. So, or it can be prevented even better. So I hope from today going forward, we are going to, you know, make an effort in terms of normalizing mental health and talking about it and destigmatizing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, my guest was once a lecturer for voice, theory of music and African music at the University of Zululand. She taught music at the Kongesa Youth for Performing Arts, founded by Professor Kabim Ngoma. She co-founded a Saturday music school in Guadalangezo community. She's been involved in choral music since her school days, sang in school choirs, church choirs, and adult choirs of KwaZulu Natal. She started adjudicating choral music in 1986. Wow, it's been a while. Adjudicating for different choral music platforms, to name a few, Itirisano, which is now called South African School Coral Eisted Ford, National Choir Festival, NCF, Correctional Services, Competitions, Department of Arts and Culture in various provinces. I've seen her in the Western Cape um, and many other provinces like the Eastern Cape. Equitivet uh, Colleges, South African Teacher Institutions, Choral Associations, Isatika, um, in different church choral competitions, in Melting Pot, World Choir Games, and has also adjudicated internationally. She has received awards for long standing and her contributions in the choral music fraternity. She is a producer and a director of music productions and has produced numerous productions at the university. Beautiful Classical Melodies is one of her productions which toured locally and was part of Grahamstown National Arts Festival. She has sung in opera productions and has produced um, choral conductors of note. She has read academic papers in Africa and Europe focusing on choral and indigenous music of South Africa. She's the co-founder of South African Voice Ensemble, also known as SAVE also founded Makwean and Drumming Ensemble that performed nationally and internationally a combination of unique in, in indigenous instruments, the Zulu string bow and assorted drums from Nigeria and South Africa. She is a facilitator for workshops on choral music nationally and internationally. She's been a chief adjudicator for the National Choir Festival for a period of two years. She's also a vocal coach, Currently, she retired from lecturing, um, but intends to empower communities through music whilst running her business. Ladies and gentlemen, today she's here to share from her wealth of knowledge and experience. I present to you Umama Unomusa Siliki. Let me find you, Gogo, so that we can begin to chat. There she is. <laughs> what a welcome. Um, thank you. Thank how you. are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Sposiso. How are you? I'm very well. And thank you so much for being here. You're looking mm. good. Thanks. You're looking good. <laughs> you know, people are going um, are going over and, and above with um, the new Miss Essay on Nkai. And Tina, we 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 coral. We've we've seen this guy for for a long time now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember. I remember um, the first time I saw you um, adjudicating. Uh, there was there was there were a lot of people commenting. But yo, I wanna love this woman guy. I know she's very strict. <laughs> <laughs> and and really you were you were very strict and and always prepared you know that's that's one of the things i really love about you you know in, in, in some of your workshops that i've attended um you know it's one of those workshops after just after the workshop i would really want to go back and work that's how <laughs> I so, so Gogo, how have you been 
Ah, Gogo is is pushing. Um, it's um, it's COVID. It's the pandemic. So there isn't much to do in South Africa and in the world, mm. except to abide. We need to sanitize and um, and wash our hands. <laughs> That's what we are literally doing uh, currently. Yeah. So um, I would like to to greet. Um, uh, all your viewers, Musi, so you have this wonderful program that you are running and it has um, accumulated uh, viewership. You are, doing, you are doing very well. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And mm. this afternoon, we are blessed by your presence. Thank um, you. I'm really looking forward to your, to your presentation. You know, um we've we've been having these conversations as you know for for mm, for quite yes. a time now um if 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 we be like i think we've done more than 35 episodes you know every week we've been mm -hmm, having mm -hmm. conversations um and and there's been a lot of discussions about you know things that we've done i think in particular things that we've done wrong in the past um, yeah, yeah. Uh, even though there's quite a lot that we've done correctly, which I think uh -huh. is some of the things that you are going to speak about. As I'm saying, I'm I'm very much looking forward to your to your to your presentation because there's quite a lot that we've done correctly in the past and True. we continue to do correctly, but there are also things that you know we're not doing according to how we, we, we should. And That's and, true. and you know, finding solutions going forward. So, mm. uh, without you know wasting time, let me hand over to you so that you can present to us whatever you've prepared, and then we can have a discussion later. Thanks, Musiso. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, mine is to open a dialogue, a discussion on who we are in this uh, adorable genre of ours. We need to pave the future for our existence. And uh, the, the, the reason for this lecture is to say, um, let's look deeper and do the right thing. Even before I start on my paper, just to give you a clue of what exactly is happening. Look at um, SASCE, for example. SASCE is an organized structure. Um, choirs that perform are controlled, be it regionally, be it the district, be it provincial, be it national. Uh, look at soccer. Look at many other activities in the country and who are we and how are we being controlled what kind of a structure are we so i will attempt to to give some some ideas on how we can move on in this fraternity of ours we need to create a structure where we incorporate amateurs, amateur conductors, as well as professionals. Our conductors need to undergo training and be certified, very important, so that we become formalized. Those that have formal university training and any other music qualification already qualify. Those that have already accumulated experience can be awarded the recognition of prior learning in line with national qualification system. This has been frustrating us all these years because we are hardworking people, but we don't know where to start and what to do. The reason being that they have already been in the industry and have accumulated experience and knowledge. I'm talking about prior learning. We can learn from other sporting codes, to name, a, to name a few, like athletics, soccer, cycling, boxing, etc. 
Without affiliations, it will be difficult to administer and manage this industry as it is difficult even today. This could be done through camps and clinics where conducting certificates will be awarded. We have been doing this in the past and conductors have been attending all these workshops all these years without getting any recognition. Special clinics or camps can be arranged during weekends for a period of a month in a particular district and thereafter certificates will be awarded. Many of you have attended many of these workshops without being credited. I'm not talking about music prescriptions. I'm not talking about workshops that analyze the music. Those will be clinics specifically designed to educate conductors. In our structured system, professionals and amateurs will be properly managed. That is why I said, think of soccer and all those coaches that are coaching throughout the country and the certificates that they acquire, they, they acquire to go and visit all these clubs. It's structured, it's formalized. With this structure in place, conductors can now run their choirs as music schools. Look, you've been teaching music, but some of you don't consider themselves as music teachers. We usually sell ourselves short as we consider our existence only for competitions. And every time we seek funding, we want to be sponsored for, a com for competitions, and that's it. Why are we reducing ourselves to that level? Don't get me wrong. We do need sponsorship for competitions, but that's not the sole purpose of our existence. NPOs. We've been talking in the past about turning our choirs into businesses without putting much thought into this concept. A business should make profit, isn't it? Do we think if we just turn our careers into a business, we'll be able to make profit to sustain its existence? No, that, not, that may not be achievable because if you are a business, you must be available at all times when asked for a performance. You must be able to tour for a month or a year around the world to make money. Do you think that's achievable? You need to be full-time to achieve your goals. Is that doable, Nzansi? To the unemployed, yes, but to the employed, no. Let's then stop comparing this genre with Maskandi, Isitatamia, jazz, and pop. Because most of the practitioners of these genres are full-time in their practice, hence are able to spend a year in a different continent, just like Lady Smith or Black Mambazo. Those singers are full-time participants. Look at Indlovu Choir, Soweto Gospel Choir. Are we like them? No, we are not. Who are we then? We are community developers. Look at it this way. One can develop a community by opening a Saturday math school to help school learners and ask for funding to run that school. I did say that conductors are teachers. Most choirs have committees and managers and all those members are involved in managing the school. You can teach your learners on a daily basis in the evenings, it's up to you, or you can be a Saturday music school. What is this school all about? Your school is about teaching music specialization in choir conducting and learning how to read music. It's exactly what you're doing on a daily basis, but it's just that you're not, you are not uh, structured. I know immediately, I mentioned reading music. People are thinking of self notation. That's not what I'm, I'm referring to here. I'm talking about teaching tonics alpha. Staff notation could be a cherry on top if you have an ability to, to do so. As a conductor, you are empowering your community, including youth. Tony Solfa is
pitched correctly and it's a laborious exercise. You retire at night with no energy, having been trying to teach this very difficult notation. If tonics alpha was easy, as alluded, we wouldn't have pitch or intonation problems. We take what we are doing for granted because we've been doing it all our lives and we think it's not work. It is a fact that we are a very sensitive nation because of our past. We are easily dented. It's so easy for a person who cannot read Tony Sulfur to say, South African choirs do not know music. You hear this statement, then you feel inferior. There have been many debates, even among us, some proposing that South Africa should do away with Tony Sulfur. And you ask yourself, why? The answer will then be because it takes time to put words to music. Can I tell you something? Tony Sulfur notation is not a South African invention. It was invented by Sarah of Norwich in England and was popularized by John Kerwin. It's not a South African invention. Remember how our traditional education system works? We orally transmit from generation to generation. In other words, so as to teach a song, you teach it. And, and, your, and, your, and, and the listeners will learn the song and then perform after. I'm glad I was part of the World Choir Games where I learned that other countries don't even bother about notating their music. They will give you a music score that illustrates how the melody moves by using straight lines and curves without words and that's it. I one day heard someone saying South Africa still needs to invent a notation. My argument was why, when we already have existing notations, we can modify the existing ones to suit our style, just like Professor Mzilika Zukumal, who uses glissandos and portamentos to illustrate the singing of a chant style, or just like Krinisela Sibisi, who gives an instruction at the beginning that the piece should be sung in a new hubo style or a closer composition by Ngobe for a song to be sung in a chorus or Methodist church style. Now, coming back to your project. Register your project as a community, community development project through music. Hold meetings with your management and craft a plan on how you're going to run this project. In your planning, do mention that you'll have a concert or concerts in a year as an outcome of your teaching, wherein you are going to invite an audience. Branding. Today I can easily identify the logo of the Coral Meg. I even remember the colors. Today I can identify the logo of the Coralist. I even remember its cursive font. Why? Because they're making themselves visible. They are marketing the brand. We have witnessed them growing because they are consistent in what they are doing. Some thought these platforms would be dead by now, but they're growing strong day by day. We are so lucky at this day and age that we have social media to utilize. I bet most of the choirs have logos, but they are kept somewhere in a corner. We design logos and emblems so that we can be easily recognized, not to hide them in our laptops. We also need to understand how marketing works. In a choir, you'll need a team that deals with branding, marketing, and advertising. So that when you intend staging a concert, you know that there's a team that is alerting and attracting audiences. It cannot all be done by a conductor. I repeat, it cannot all be done by a conductor. A conductor should focus on conducting and teaching music. 
The rest of the work should be done by the committees. Camps, you mention in your plan, you know better the number of camps you hold in a year. Usually such camps are held at backpackers, not in fancy hotels. Calculate the budget for that camp from accommodation, transport, and catering, and write it on your plan. Concerts, calculate the budget for your concert, venue booking, catering, transport, etc. You must have an itinerary for the whole year. You need to table all your activities and state the budget for every activity. Weekly running of the school, create a budget. Concerts, create a budget. Camps, create a budget. Competitions, create a budget for transport, for catering, for accommodation, etc. Go and enjoy the competition without feeling broke. Excuse me, come back from a competition to spice up your repertoire by adding small ensembles, duets, quartets, quintets, double quartets. Is it DBE? Add a budget for an orchestra if you feel the need and stage a community concert. Plan for Christmas carols. Perform in malls. Present your proposal to a mall manager on a busy weekend. Just go there and perform. You'll be surprised how much of an audience you're going to attain. And sell tickets right there or give them brochures inviting them to a concert. When invited to events, you must have a small ensemble that is ready to perform for corporate functions. Repertoire. It's also very important how you select your repertoire. Whilst our choirs are very good in singing through composed songs, be it from the West or from Africa, let's also show pride in our culture. We need to unlearn the notion that was brought through missionization that our cultures are barbaric, that our indigenous music is for pagans. We need to incorporate who we are in our repertoire. We also need to perform our indigenous music with pride. It's so appalling to see a choir undermining who they are. If we can't take pride in ourselves, who else can be? Our indigenous music needs to be thoroughly rehearsed, perfected, and then performed with dignity. Some think performing music from the worst elevates them to another level, whilst they are deceiving themselves. Take pride in who you are. Have you ever thought that the Italian song, Funiculi, Funicula, is an Italian traditional song? Everyone knows the song. You can equate it to your South African Shoshaloza, or Ihub, or Istubili, etc. We can do this, fellow South Africans. Let us be ambassadors of our culture. Do you know that some sponsors question our repertoire and say maybe you can get your sponsors from the West as you are promoting their culture? It shouldn't be like that at all. Charity begins at home. Let's also fall in love with who we are by taking pride in ourselves. We have a track record by now in South Africa that we are capable of mastering Western repertoire. No matter how challenging we are able to deliver. Thank you for that, Zanzi. But let's diversify and take pride in our 11 ethnicities. There's a new trend lately of the worst, also diversifying by learning our traditional songs, especially in Germany. Thanks to our ambassadors who carry our South African flag to teach our wedding songs and choruses to the world. By the way, the world knows South Africa because South Africa produces singers of note that are all over the world, that are recognized everywhere, but they're not known, they're not known in their own country. 
we have seen trending videos of our traditional genres. Have you ever noticed how well polished their performances are? Performing, performing your traditional music better than us. This is a challenge. Some may struggle with choreography, but the singing is amazing. We have it all, we have rhythm and singing, and therefore let us showcase. This vast, diversified and assorted style is going to attract viewers if we attempt to resuscitate our television programs. Recordings, here's a challenge to our most beloved genre. We can complain right, left and center, but if we don't have anything tangible recorded, it's like we don't exist. We've been in operation for donkey years now, but even at this day and age, we can't locate our local choirs in our music shops or warehouses. Why is that? If we've been in operation for such a long period of time. We always have to wait for an evening at nine for a nine o'clock program on radio for us to enjoy, to enjoy our January. We are not visible enough. I once went to an ethnomusicology conference in Spain. In their opening session, they play music for different participating countries. Guess what? It represented South Africa. It was the most beautiful choir singing. It was in a video. I recognized the choir. I didn't know, I was in the audience, I didn't know if to stand and, 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 and say, I'm from that country, I personally know that choir. I felt like a little kid. My African friend said, wow, South Africa, thank you for representing the continent. They also had music from their countries, played too. Some got online wanting to buy the music. Some asked me where they can get the music. Imagine how embarrassed I was, stammering to say, it's not, it's not available. There was a hard pill to swallow for me. Now, it's almost 15 years after that conference, but still my country has nothing to offer on the table. Yes, there was a project in KZN where choirs were called to record. It was a once-off project. Once that bunch of recording was finished, it was the end. There was no continuity on reproduction. And again, music was privately sold. It never reached music shops. The project died. That happened, we need to appreciate this. That happened because someone in the arts department had a vision that was turned into a reality. That is why it's also important to put right people in higher positions, visionaries who want to bring change. I don't want to delve into that. That's a debate for another day. In short, plan to produce such as YouTube, iTunes, and others. Let us mainstream our music vigorously. Broadcasting services with reference to, to, to radio stations, May I say it loud and clear that our radio stations have done a lot because we don't have any recordings. It's been 26 years now since democracy. Does it make sense that we They have grown to be like us. Are we cares? We need to break this curse. If it is a curse, and think positively to mold our future. 
I know for a fact that most of you by now are saying, how can we be positive in such a negative environment? Listen, we went through a lot and we succeeded. We are an apartheid product where it was even hard to think of creating a logo because of fear. We were so afraid and timid and that was instilled in our minds, fellow South Africans. We can't, after 26 years, be seen to be complaining like we are doing. Our elders paved the way. It was difficult, but they were able to put together structures like Atasa, not to, to name a few, a few, with success. We took the bait on. It's our turn now to deliver, but we are hitting a stalemate. I repeat, we need to be vigorous in our strategies. We've been able to form associations in most provinces. Only a few are failing. Guess why they are failing? It's because of unnecessary feuds. Things like, I won't attend a meeting that is initiated by so-and-so, or I can't serve in a structure that has so-and-so in a committee. We sometimes kick out relevant and efficient administrators because they don't have music qualifications. And forget that the, the person you are kicking out has a qualification in administration, something that you don't have and failing to practice. We need to accommodate everybody. We need to work. We need to strategize. Let me talk about music legends. Fellow South Africans, we must pay respect and try to learn from our gray hairs. Our youth should learn to accumulate wisdom from these wise, experienced experts. This rejection of wise elders escalates to our youth who then do not pay respect to them. Wisdom has no color. In other countries in the world, elders are highly recognized. Why am I citing all these examples? I'm trying to bring us all back to a visual discussion that occurred last week on Coral Meg, sparked by Sydney. <clears throat> it was indeed a very good one. The legends in this fraternity paved the way. They have gained experience and wisdom. They understand the industry and its pros and cons very well. We need their visibility at all times. When on stage conducting, there's a lot of wisdom and gracefulness that is witnessed. There's no retirement age in the arts. That's what Bowie said. Unless the legs cannot carry your body and if also engulfed with ailments. I don't remember members of the society saying to Huma Sigela, stop playing the trumpet now because of your age. Or to Jonas Nguangwa saying, stop playing the trombone because of your age. Or to Kefa Siminya saying, stop singing because of it. Never. The conductor Leonard Bernstein and the conductor, Professor Kabim Goma, passed on in their late 70s, but they were still conducting. Let's give our legends the platform to continue mentoring our young conductors. Let it come from them that they are no longer capable. Most of the young conductors are products of these elders and they haven't stopped. They are still producing conductors and singers of note. If today you are a young conductor, think of how you acquired your skill. Isn't it that you learned from your conductor? Let's respect our genre and all those that paved the way and are still involved in its progress. Sometimes we get so engulfed with competitions such that we don't see a big this industry. Conductors are not there to direct choirs for competition competitions only. 
choral competitions. This practice in South Africa should continue. We love it. It brings adrenaline, vibe, stress, tension, which all leads to fulfillment. Whether getting placed or not, the feeling is that of achievement. We've been doing this forever. We are born into it. We shall leave this earth, but this practice will continue. That being said, we need to think further and ask ourselves a question of, does the existence of a choir only depends on competitions? But to tell you the truth, some choirs are only created for competitions. Well and good. Let's note that running a choir is a very expensive project that takes on your time, that drains one physically and emotionally. That will drain your pocket to leave you with nothing. Literally broke. You've been surviving and are still surviving because of passion, sentiments, and the love of the genre. We thank each and everyone for such indelible contribution. This genre is very expensive in many ways. I don't want to talk about opera productions because if I were to mention what goes into it before it gets on stage, you'll just lose interest. Let's narrow our focus down to a choir and its expenses. All these years having been involved with a choir, you've spent a meaningful amount of money to get it going without disbursements. We thank you for that. Don't stop, continue for now until you have all your ducks in a row. Choral music and social coherence. Social cohesion refers to the extent, I quote, of connectedness and solidarity among groups in society. It identifies two main, di two main dimensions, the sense of belonging of a community and the relationships among members within the community itself, of quote, which is exactly what our choir project will be doing. Besides teaching notes and putting words to music choir, choir members are taught discipline. They are taught time management, they are taught empathy. Through these choirs, self-respect and respect others. To carry yourself in the community. Men taught how to handle women. Most men in choirs are gentlemen. Through these choirs, real men are produced who don't jeopardize their statuses and engage in GPV. Men who don't do drugs. We don't do drugs in choirs. These choirs produce sound leaders. What more really can we do to make our country better? The side we need to work on is poverty alleviation. How so? As I alluded earlier on, once you run your choir as a development project with a sound budget, a lot can be achieved. Imagine adding other skills, calling people to share some knowledge to your choir. This you don't just think of overnight. You incorporate in your plan so that you put up a budget for it. How are we perceived by the community or shall I say our community engagement as choirs? What is that we're doing? Have you ever, as a choir, thought of a weekend where you are all going to board a bus, wearing overalls, to go and paint that dilapidated school while humming a, humming a hymn or a composition by Gamzashe or a composition by Muera, Muerane or a composition by Kumalo or Smiya? where you call on the media to document your project so as to become visible to the community and the country at large. We need to witness these projects in all provinces and make sure that the media is there. You can think of anything else. Let's go and sing at orphanages, call media, 
Sing at the old age homes, call media. Yeah, the malls, call media. Whenever you want to stage a concert and sell tickets, people already know about you. Sell tickets door to door. Use social media, advertise. Love your audience with highlights. It's about time we make South Africa know that we exist. We sometimes hold competitions and you'd find that nobody knows. It's like we're not there. It's, for, it's up to us to work harder. We must be vigorous in our strategy. Identify a product in the market. Ask them to create uh, an advert for them. An advert is worth a minute or two, three minutes. You compose a jingle. We hear your choir singing it. You get paid. Or in return for favor to sponsor your concert. We have so many official holidays that we can incorporate in our plan and put a budget for it. We have Abba Day, Heritage Day, Women's Day, Day of Reconciliation, Workers' Day, the list is endless. What is our contribution in all of this? These ideas I'm stating are not for conductors, but for the entire com committee or management to look into. Stop revolving your choir's existence through competitions. Competi competitions are just a fraction, as I've alluded earlier on, just for us to relax, have fun. Some even play, even plan holidays around those competitions. For example, music enthusiasts usually book to stay in a town for a week after competitions. Let's not sit on our laurels. Let's show our capabilities. What's annoying and frustrating us is that we know our capabilities, but don't know where to start or how to start. Right now, with the current scourge, we can start talks on WhatsApp groups or any other groups and come up with ideas of what we want to see our choirs engage in. Every choir member should contribute a paragraph and the committee should put together those paragraphs and form a document or create a business plan. Instead of paying someone to do it for you, remember, you have no resources. And, and it's, a, an outsider has no clue of things you want to do. Keep it simple and do it yourself. Also remember that once you are a project, you don't do business with cash. Usually that practice leads to most businesses failing as it is difficult to account. Slips get lost, some become faint. Every time, swipe a card when buying something. Do an EFT when paying your taxi driver to a camp or to a community project or to a concert. When buying food for your camp, swipe that card. It's easy to give an accountant a bank statement to create financials. You must bear in mind that for continuity, you need to produce yearly financials. No funder will consistently sponsor someone or something that operates in the dark and has no transparency. Remember that you have a committee that monitors every movement, transactions. It's not a one-man show. There's a project account, not a, conduct, a conductor's personal account. Mzansi, if we don't wake up now in our industry, we shall never in the future. Currently, we are not meeting for rehearsals. This is the right time put to, to put our fraternity in order. We must emerge on the other side of the pandemic victorious. When people see choirs, some see money and say, and make money out of their skill. And that's what has been happening. Let's think for ourselves. It's not easy, but doable. In closing, let me thank all these platforms for creating a dialogue to pave a way forward for our fraternity. What South African tertiary institutions are currently doing is a debate for another day. We also need to open 
a discussion on their contribution towards growth of this coronal fertility and revamp the, the, the tertiary, uh, their territory. Let South Africa shine. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Smoo. What a rich <laughs> presentation. <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, okay, so where are we going to start? With <laughs> <laughs> this discussion. I mean there's, yeah. there's there's quite a lot that you that you it is. It's, it's it's a lot. You know, I, I, I like the way you, you approached the yes. idea of formalizing the sector. Because in most cases, we, we, we talk about um, creating or recreating choirs into becoming businesses. But that language, mm -hmm. that language becomes scary for, for, for people who have no business background. They think, okay, so where am I going to start? But your approach, um, you, you are saying, let us use our choirs yes. as community yes. development yes. project. Yes, yes. Maybe, maybe that's, that's that's the start. That's the start. If 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 you can say a bit more about that, so that whoever is listening and who wants to approach this can actually try it. You know, I'm I'm all about um doing yeah, stuff uh, Dave, now, who's been talking, long, you know the whole year. Most of the things that I've mentioned here, it's things that I've done. Sometimes it's nice to talk from experience. I once, uh, now was it 1995? I was, I was very young, I was so energetic. I opened a Saturday music school. I think you had to mean something, Saturday music school. I did. Yay. Hey. I'm back, I'm ah, back. Internet, yeah, okay, good. Yes, um, yes. I, I worked alone to create that business plan. Come up with a business plan, plan as a group. My school was operating only on Saturdays. I had mm. uh, school kids. I have, I had community members. Mm -hmm. Because I also included theory and piano and voice. And they were budgeted for. They would claim per hour because it was part of the budget. And then they'll be paid end of the month when they do the claim. If they don't pitch up for work, it's, it appears here that you cannot claim for a day we were not there. Mm -hmm. As a conductor, if you are a teacher, you, you, you work your strategy. <laughs> that on weekends I'll be teaching for so many hours and the claim will be like this. You work it out, you have to do that research. What is happening currently? How, do you, how, how much do you claim for an hour? And then once, once, once you've made that plan and then do your budget for everything that you're going to do, don't make a mistake of thinking of something in the middle of the year that is not budgeted for. Because once uh, you get audited and then you tell the auditors that, no, you know what, I budgeted for, for the concert and then uh, all of a sudden there was this competition and then I took money for the concert and then I went to the competition. <laughs> no one's going to sponsor you in the future because you, 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 you're not a good planner. Sit down as, as a committee and, and, and tabulate everything and some projects you may even skip because you won't have time. There's so much South Africa that we can do. Mm. Um, sit down, it tabulate, tabulate, and then attach. You sometimes you you know when the schools are closed, when the schools are opened, uh, when are the holidays, when is this? Put all the an itinerary of of your plan, and then you budget for it. And then you, you take it from there. It's easy. You don't have to announce, go to a radio and say, we are touched. Attend your choir. Are your school. You know that 
you give a, a, a choir music, you give them music, and then you start teaching your song. You start from bar one, and you end in bar 20. You have soprano, you have alto, you have tana, tana you have bass. Those people, some have never even seen tonic sulfur. They, you, you, you teach them, they need to learn. It's, conductors know it's laborious. Conductors yeah. sometimes become very angry because we are not pitching correctly. But guess what? At the end, they get it right. You've been doing it all these years, all your life. What did you get in return? You tell me. How many of you have been compensated for what they've been doing all these years? And you ask yourself, where were you going to be, to be paid? Who was going to pay you for doing your work? No one. It's your business. Take care of your business. There's no money that is going to come from it somewhere. Someone is going to recognize you and say, hey, man, you're, you're such a lovely conductor. Here's 50,000. There's nothing like that in this world. When you create a business, you suffer, you work hard for business to sustain itself. So we need to turn these struct. We already have an audience, our audience, or we already have learners. We already have the learners. It's just we need to structure it properly. And of course, we 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 have the energy. We, I mean, the amount of time we spend, you know, preparing for a competition or mm -hmm. any other performance, we 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 invest so much time. Mm -hmm. So we cannot mm -hmm. redirect part of that energy into into the the the, the business plan that you are talking about. And that teacher teaching a choir, a competition song. That is business. It's a school. You are teaching someone a new song that you've never taught before. It's work. You need to be compensated for that work. Why do I have to undermine myself and say, all the time I just teach and get stressed and that's it and I walk away with it and, and, and it's been happening and I'm, and I'm comfortable with it because I've beaten so and so. Yes, let's bring competitions. Let's have fun. Let's beat one another and laugh and move on. But the amount of work that conductors are putting into it, it's, 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 it's unimaginable. It's painful. Very, very painful. Maybe I don't, as, to, I don't want to be emotional. Let me collect, come back. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> please. <laughs> maybe maybe as, as, as part of, of learning this business language, we, we, we ought to also learn the art of saying no and saying yes, and this is what I am worth. Because sometimes we begin to, 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 to come to Facebook and, and complain and complain, but when you get deeper into the matter, you see that, okay, but this person didn't say to the company or to the department of whatever that was yes, yeah. hiring the choir, they didn't say, but why are you paying 60,000 to an individual who's going to render one song, but you want to pay us 5,000 rands? Are we, are, we, are we bold enough you know, to say, this is what we are worth? So maybe that's, that's part of what we need to learn as, as we move on. I know some are doing it and are winning at it, but I think the majority of us are, are still not able it's, to do that. It's, it's us, we reduce ourselves. When you are called to come and perform, they ask for a quotation. One person, one Guaido star will be asked for a quotation and they will write 100,000. And then they ask your choir to come for a performance and then you write 5,000. With 60 people, does that make sense? Doesn't make sense. So it's up to us. We are selling ourselves. Who are we supposed to blame? We shouldn't blame anyone. We must blame ourselves. Blame ourselves. Are we running ourselves? That Guaido person that claims 100,000, they run... They, 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 they are singing their music as a business. So it's up to us. Let's run our, our, our fraternity as a business. Look at what soccer is doing. Look at what athletics are doing. Look at what cyclists are doing. Those, 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 these people that um, um, go to the river and it's, it's competition, but the, you know each and every person is going to enter that competition is registered somewhere. Are you registered somewhere? Is there a national database for, 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 for all of us? Are we known? We are not. We, we are just an entity. You know what? If, if you don't know your business very well, a person in the structures would be like, ah, they're serving me right, these people. You know, they don't know what they are doing. Let's leave them at that. We're not going to do anything. 
it, it mm. serves them right. They're saving. They're saving. They're not going to pull you in a corner and say, you know what? Come here. You can. It's up to us. So let us share. Some of us are business practitioners. So let us share. These workshops, these clinics, these camps, we need to, we need to work them out. We need to do presentations. We need those workshops to be funded so that when those con conductors come out with certificates, they need to be at NQF levels. Yeah. Yes. You, you, maybe just two things um, before before I look at, at at the comments. There's quite a lot of. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> well, there's been a lot that you that, that you raised. I mean, this this conversation cannot happen, you know, over one show. No. 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 But but Big. the two things, the two things, the two things that that I wanted to touch on. One, um, it, it's part of the workshops and clinics that you were talking about, but you were specific on 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 conductors. Uh, yes. But I also wanted to bring in part of, of, of the things you said right at the end, you, you touched on corporate governance, you know, accountability. We know that it requires it to um, don't have some of the things that you were saying that, OK, you lose the card, you swipe here and then you present uh, the bank statement to the accountant or, or the, the auditor. They'll then be able to draw up your books. We Most of us, we don't have that. And conductors happen to be doing almost everything in the choir, and that and that makes things to be chaotic. Hey, you know? it's too much, it's too much. So, so I want I want I wanted to check you know the importance of also empowering other members of the choir management with skills other than music. Because music, the conductors, as you know, conductors are knowledgeable, uh, be it from Eskolweni, but Bana and Uluaz, and they are talented. Singers are very good. We've got beautiful choirs, but administratively, I think we, we are lacking. Okay. I think when, 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 when empowering conductors in these workshops and these camps, it may not only be conductors, as you are saying. We need to also incorporate administrators, call facilitators who have specialized on administration. Admin, uh, uh, facilitators will just focus on that, whilst um, other facilitators are teaching conductors. You see, within that camp, it shouldn't just be conductors only. So for us to be able to start this as a business, because we're starting from scratch. We don't know anything. So when we empower each other, the choir should bring certain um, members of the committee so that they get empowered and they get certificates as well as, so in that camp, let us empower everybody so that we know when you go back home as a committee, things will happen. And when, you need to be taught the basics. Business yes, basics, yes. yes. All right, let's 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 have a look at some of the comments here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fire, fire, I know. I know it's gonna quite be fire. Lot, quite a lot, you know. Sure. Uh, but but let, let, let's let's bring in okay. even the ones okay. that are showering you with some love. I mean oh. um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any of them, so <laughs> Um, but there's a comment here by Uzim Six. She says, Why so Sindaba Ugogo? Are we hiding behind academic regalia instead of having our hands dirty and working towards building our choirs into profitable organizations? Is it doable? Um, it was a lot of question, but of course, we, we know it's doable. Umesis is going to steal you to a SWAT. Yeah. <laughs> He said he's going to bring you back to Eswati for, for a lecture on some of the matters that you're raising here. Perfect. Perfect, Meli. <laughs> um, another legend here, um, uh, part of the legends you were talking about, Uma Mandi Sanguza, she's been? Yeah, I know. 
Naye, she's appreciating um, how you're articulating your, your wise words of wisdom. And she Thank says, you. Thank that you, that you, that you will learn, must learn from this presentation. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. here, we are normal. We are sad this news. Uzi from one that says, Wow, what an informative sharing <laughs> lecture. You have made my Sunday afternoon. Thank wow. you so much. Thanks, Zippo. <laughs> well, people are really learning from, from the ideas. And I hope that we, we are going to do something from, from here. We're not just going to learn, record, and, and then. Uh, 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 Mr. Matthews is also here. Hello, Madonna. <laughs> He says how shameful we've made choral music genre to be in our country. Mm -hmm. I to say more. More, oh, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Banda. laughs> and this is he brings up this this project. This is one of the projects that was going around the country with with um with Ukamba Productions yeah. with U Mr. Mbofu, as he says, Mr. Matthews here. And and not only that choirs were being recorded, but part of the project encouraged composers. I remember most of my new compositions between 2012 and 2014 yeah, yeah. were in this, and we learned a lot of other songs instead of choirs singing, you know, singing competition music only. So I hope mm -hmm. the project could, could come back again. I don't know what happened to it. But he's saying we killed the project. It's us. Imagine, uh, and of course, I would I would agree, you know, part partially to that, because you know I've 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 seen some of the choirs going to the project. Isn't it already? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, know, yeah. They would all record and then it's a shame. Fall apart on stage. It's a shame. A shame. And and I mean, that project used to give choirs money that was an equivalent of number one in competitions. That that was it. You know, I, I remember it, it reps from that competition, from that uh, festival, they would go around checking state of readiness. One of them was Upustumo Jacobs. Okay. Uh -huh. He would go around checking and assisting choirs. Mm -hmm. It's a bit disappointing at times, you know, going there and figuring out our music. What a life-changing discourse already. Um, transformation is in progress for us young conductors and entire choir administrators. Thank you so much, Ma'am uh, Silege and Mr. Njeza, for such a nutritious meal of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you, Zambia. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very nice. Sis Nozi Pona is here. Also appreciating your presentation, and Nambula is also here, my and, friend, <laughs> and many others. And thank you so much for 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 joining us, Wonge uh, Umtu, that joined us on on Facebook. Lastly, Gogo, I wanted to talk about the point you raised, even though you said let's talk about it later. Maybe we can just drop it and, and thinking about it. You know, the connection, we've got beautiful choirs as Tula with Sasuke. Right. From, from Yeah. And it's an organized, very organized. Very organized structure. Hmm. And then you get to tertiary institutions. At some point, it was well organized. At, At some, some point. point just fell apart. I don't know what was going on. Um, I was part of it as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't see how these two structures, you know, are working together. And I feel they should be working together because we feed from both. Choirs have students from grade 12 and, and, and youth choirs. Also, you have you see, but these two are not working together. Is it is it something a, a possible that we can do? 
We, we can, we can, Smoo. Um, it does not just emanate with, with, with the choirs. There's so much that is so wrong that we, we, we need to correct. We have tried uh, to correct. For example, I don't want to waste people's times, people's time, but let me remind you. Remember at some stage that um, uh, so South Africa closed all colleges. And those colleges were, were, were producing conductors. We never had problems running out of conductors in schools because colleges were producing. Now those colleges were closed. When closing colleges, they closed all historically disadvantaged music departments. You people don't know that. They closed Investor Vendor, they closed Forte, they closed Unitra, they closed Unis, they closed all of them. Why? Because they were not teaching violin. And wow. then what happened? What happened? They closed uh, ed um, colleges, they closed, un closed universities, then they introduced arts and culture learning area. Does that, does that make sense? Who's going to teach that? And then we were, we were running around like headless chickens. We, we, you know, schools were so frustrated. Principals were so frustra frustrated. They didn't know what to do because there were no teachers. There was nothing coming from the colleges. There was nothing coming from the universities. So other universities started fighting. Fort a fort. You need to afford them. No, 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 no. We're not closing us down. We're not going to do that. Recently, not long ago, Vanda too. They, they also joined. Like, no, we need to open. Unis are still fighting even today to bring back the, 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 the BIMAS program, hidden under drama. So I'm trying to, there's a lot that is wrong, that is not communicating. And to to produce teachers to fit this. You cannot start with, with a subject and say, here's a subject. You are not empowered. Do what you, you need to do. You know what I did? I went to schools. I did a research on arts and culture. I went to schools. Mm. And I'll come to a school and ask for a teacher from the principal. Guess what? Some teachers will run away. They won't come to me. I'll tell them, no, I'm, I'm not an official from the government. I want to find out if are you people happy or with the subject arts and culture. Some will, will let me in. I'll go to class and I'll ask for an exercise book from, from, from the, it was around September. Ask for an exercise book. Kids will give me, and then you'll find that there's a saucer and a cup that was drawn in February. And that's it. Page one, nothing else. Sure. And then what are you doing? I know we just, we just, we just sometimes play. I know sometimes uh, we, we, we just, just sing. You know, that's how arts and culture was introduced. It was so frustrating. Until universities introduced at your question of universities and schools. It's up to us. We can do that. Because the, the, the universities, schools look up to. That's where they want to go. Mm. So we can have projects where we need, but we need to sit down. I've never put and strategize how we need to work together. But obviously you cannot have a school and have a university, you operate in your own corner, in your own forest, and the school operates. You are not even role models to, this, to these kids, but you seem so beautiful. They're supposed to be saying, I'm looking forward to. Let me tell you how universities worked in the past. In my primary uh, school, university students, it was a project by Kabim Goma. They would come to my school and then they would coach us as a choir. It was part of their schooling adversity. They would teach us, they would coach us. And that made us to look forward to, I mean, they're doing standard three, standard four. And you hear this person coming from university to, to, to coach a choir and they seem so beautiful. And you feel like, I want to be like that person one day. You, you see? But wow. those were students, those were students. That's what we can do as choirs in, 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 at, at universities to work with, 
we need to penetrate the schools. We need to penetrate. I said we, we need to be vigorous when I, when I, when I'm just. We need to be vigorous for us to be seen. If we do those projects, like uh, university choirs, I know you're involved with the university choir, but how much of yourself is involved with local choirs at the Western Cape? Not much. So you, you need to find schools that you're going to work with. You need to do a presentation at your own institution and say, on such and such a day, I need a bus. We'll be going and doing da 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 da, -da there as a choir. It's that simple. And then you, we are also attracting music students of the future because they've been seeing university students who are doing, and some even doing different degrees. They're singing in a choir. So it's, it's doable, it's smooth. Yes, of course. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm thinking now as, as we are um, closing the, the conversation, they, they, there's the TIVET College's competition, your choirs, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. means there is an interest. And, mm -hmm. and of course, it, it, it TIVET College's um, it, it programs are corner, mostly the practical. Yes. And is all of mostly need teachers who can also handle choirs. So it makes sense, you know, to yes. take that program, which used mm -hmm. to be in, in the training colleges that were closed, and mm -hmm. actually bring it to the TVET colleges so that these mm -hmm. teachers are needed to, to, to teach arts and culture. Because U U U Dr. Nompula is also um, agreeing to this, that arts and culture was just given to people with no knowledge, more especially when it comes to the music side. There, there, there's always nothing done on that yeah. side. And yeah. I know, and I don't blame them because abayas, what must they do? Abayas, yeah. nothing that they can do except to tell them about two and about cleanse, or they must just wait to catch here and there, you know. Um, so, so, so I think that's that's one of the things we 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 have to do, and I'm going to be involved in that in terms of good, good, influencing TVET colleges so that choral programs can be reintroduced back in the TVET colleges. Yeah, one well, that would be nice. Um, I know for a fact. I know for a fact some Tivet uh, college people are watching. Some rectors, some coordinators, um, lecturers, uh, adjudicators, conductors are watching this program, and they're listening to you. And I'm, I'm telling you, uh, when this thought um, grows, at least they would have thought thought about it. Yes, that's another, this is another um, important contribution here. Choral singing and conducting is a wonderful way to bring music into schools. But you are right, we need teachers who are equipped and trained to actually do that. Yes, um, Yeah, because, you, you know, at, as, as was been a CHO, at UWC, the, the music department was, was shut down, I think, Finally, in two thousand and five, so so there's no music department currently at 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 UWC, but we have a very strong um, faculty of education producing so many teachers, and and some of the teachers who are being trained in the in the education department, those that are in the choir, you know, get to learn a skill or two in the programs that I'm doing with the choir, which actually helps them when they're looking for work. Because they, they they then you know in their CVs say okay I've been in the choir this is what I've learned because I try to teach them a thing or two so that they're able at least to to handle a choir to teach a choir you know to to teach some songs and be able to conduct as well so so imagine if they were given that skill formally you know so so let me also have a look at this these last two com um, comments before we can um, say our closing remarks. Universities and music education lecturers must expose our music education students. For example, the PGCE should be well-trained in conducting choral training, etc. cetera. Good. Good. Uh, where at one stage I, att I attended an arts and culture workshop, Natisha Nakala, ET facilitator, Honor to Arawara Nilu, Lekuma topics ending awards. I know to Arawara, Kuma topics ending awards Nilu, Lengabon Gutle, Ugupuma, Goba, 
So what do you expect at the end of the day if facilitators are also not clear of what they're doing? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of course, I, I, I know that feeling. I mean, it's, it's like going to a music workshop and the facilitator is not prepared. And the words. I mean, it's something you already know. You want this person to take you, you know, deeper and beyond what you're saying. But they just say, ah, wara, wara, wara. <laughs> <laughs> no ways. <laughs> <laughs> but Gogo, it, it, it's been a wonderful conversation. Um, like I said, you've you've raised a lot of things. Um, one of the things you raised, which we did not really discuss, but I want to just highlight it. It's the issue of repertoire development, which is important. Yes. Uh, she was here. She spoke a lot about this. And I know, yena beno beno bongani makajana. Yes, uh, yes. Very big on on this thing of promoting um, indigenous okay. music for South Africa overseas. Um, another thing you spoke about was e recordings with mm. choirs. I mm. know mm. Professor Twani is is a director of Imere Makeba Audiovisual Center in East London, mm. Mm. Um, a, a, a situated a investor of Forte. At some point, I remember it was in two thousand and eight. We we had we had a deal to record there. Isaka Bengo, Manesia Pagama, I think any other choirs as Eastern Cape. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that deal was 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 done, but I know that studio is always available. Utum Sane is just recorded there. So I want well to done. choirs, you know, to, to explore e, e opportunities as in Jalo. Um uh, another thing, lastly which I, I also want us to continue talking about it. It is this thing of, of, of respecting or not respecting or blaming um, the failures of this genre to the legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Let me put it that way. Abanda Bafana Nawe, Abo Mr. Matthews, and many others who've been in this genre before who are still here. Mm. I think we need to explore that and 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 hear Uguti Abantu who who believe on this notion. What is it that they are saying? Why are they saying this? Yes. You know, I saw someone commenting. I I I can't find that comment now. Asking the question, Uguti, have we actually learned from the from these legends? If we have, what have we learned? Are we are we are we ready? To carry the baton, so these are some of the issues that we need to get out of the way if we need if we want to progress. So, Gogo, your 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 closing remarks before we can bid farewell to this. Maybe I I also need to. Uh, I didn't know that um, UWC was closed. Also, also, music department was also closed. I, I need to say something uh, towards closing how sometimes we can engage ourselves in helping a community. Um, I did say earlier on that um, music uh, was closed at the University of Zuliland. And we operate under, we are hidden under drama as, as, as a musical theater. So guess what we did at UNISO? Seeing that there was this big need uh, within the surrounding communities, Whilst we were teaching uh, a musical theater, we strengthened it. We had to register our students uh, through UNISA because we were no longer a PIMAS. We were no longer a PIMAS BA in music. We had to register them through UNISA to get the certificate, something that they can produce to say, yeah, I've done music and I've passed music. Yeah, in, 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 it's part of my um, uh, graduation. So, and, and, and then we... we, we we were enlisting them, our students, once they graduate. We had a long list of them, and we were interacting with the school principals. Mm. School principals, because they didn't have uh, teachers. And then we will feed them to, 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 the, to the schools. And we'll run out of stock. We'll run out of stock, because we have so many of these students that have gone through uh, UNISA, and they have certificates. And they'll be taken like, like fire, you know, just like paper they're gone 
and then principals are like, yeah, I still need, and I'm like, the stock is finished. Have you ever heard of that? No mm. unemployment at all, 100%. 100%. Whilst they are closing down music departments, we had a way of feeding teachers, of feeding the schools. And those, some of those conductors, as I've said earlier on, are conductors of no national winners. Some are adult choir conductors. So we, we need to, when, when the structures are, are not on our side, we need to have a way of how we can do this with success without making a lot of noise. Let us just be doing it in a corner until we succeed. Uh, it's about vuga uzenzele. As I, as, as I said earlier on, there's no agakumto corner somewhere in a corner who's saying, you know what, from, from, or, or from the government who's saying, oh, shame poor souls, yes, these coral people. Let me go and help. No one, no one's going to do that. It's up to us. So in closing, it's possible. It's doable, Jess. Already I know that with you, starting with you, you are going to work on, on, on certain schools. Your choir is going to be seen visiting schools. That's how, that's how it's done. Uh, sometimes we, we have this idea, but we don't know how to go about doing it. So we need, we need to, to strategize. We need to treat um, ourselves as, as conductors, as teachers. We need to create business plans. We need to run in a structure that is uh, visible and, and, and yeah. Yeah, let me let me let me close that way, uh, and just and 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 also to thank all the contributions from from your listeners. I, I actually enjoyed I enjoyed the presentation. Uh, uh, I enjoy I, I I enjoy you people, you platforms. Uh, uh, sometimes we need to say, this COVID or this pandemic has made us to think differently. When we emerge on the other side, we should say. Because we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for COVID. So this COVID, although it's a scourge, but let us capitalize and do things that are positive for ourselves. Yeah. Thanks. Wow. Thank you so much, Gogo. And and I agree with you. Um, it, things are going to be different, you know, beyond COVID-19. Uh, on the other hand, whilst we're dealing with COVID-19, the fourth industrial um, um, revolution is also you know, creeping in before IR is here. Um, already, EEE, Joburg, e Gauteng province and the Western Cape say, say call the 5G. The um, question is, how are we going to take advantage of that as, as, as coralists? You know, because we, we live in the same global village with everyone else. So how are we taking advantage of these changes? So, so you are right. Um, this thing, yale, yale pandemic, it, it really scared me. Uguti, you know, beyond this, some mm -hmm. of the using might be outdated. You know, beyond this, so we need mm -hmm. to keep thinking and come up with fresh ideas. So, so, so thank you so much for, for your you. contribution and thank you so much to everyone who contributed this afternoon and, and those that were watching, following the, um, the conversation. This conversation is going to remain on, on Facebook and on YouTube. You can continue to share it and invite other people to watch because there's quite a lot that uh, Umasligi shared here, you know, including branding. Mm. She's correct. Every choir has a, 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 a logo, but we don't see <laughs> logos. We don't see, I mean, choirs have Facebook pages, but yeah, pay like 10 months without any <laughs> data on the page. So why mm. do we have these platforms? Mm. We, we are on, on, on Instagram. We have videos that have been produced, mm -hmm. even if a lot of, of great quality, you know, from competition. Mm -hmm and concerts but those videos are not in our youtube channels you know so so there are the things that um Ugo is suggesting that we can start with before mm. we look for big money there's there's, mm. there's a lot that we can do you know currently so thank you thank you so much um next week i'll be taking a break for for a week <laughs> <laughs> <I deserve> it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's been a long 36 yeah. years. Uh, but even though it's been 30 break, but I'll, I'll be planning, you know, some, some, some programs because some of the things that we're talking about, it's things that I want to do so that we, we, we keep inspiring each other. Um, but Abuzwa in, 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 in the stream, there's going to be something happening. Um, some competitions, I'll be giving away some tickets to the Opportunity concert and also some CDs that um, as in, in the industry, like a Paradise from E Rhythm Divine and the songs, Zemchato, Zikabong, Anima Katiana, we are going mm -hmm. to be giving away some of those CDs. So people must stick around um, until next Sunday. Thank you, thank you, thank you very Bye. much. Bye, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon.